Welcome to today's webinar on 2017 Connections. My name is Laura Hackle, and I'll be covering the new connections and enhancements for members, including seismic design, improved two and three point bracing, fully welded moment connections, and more. You can type in your questions during the webinar and I will answer them at the end. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is improved two and three point brace geometry. So we have done um, additional support that has been added for two and three point horizontal and vertical braces. So the first thing I'm going to go through is the two and three point vertical bracing. So I'm just gonna add in So for the new two point vertical bracing, both braces can now slope in the same direction. So for example, I'll just put in one here. I'll just change this to a three by three by a quarter. And then I can also have it go in the same direction so they can be in the same slope. So those, the slopes are in the same direction now. Another example, if I go the other way, I'll just turn this to an HSS to show a different material type. So now it shows that they both can go in the same slope or the same slope direction. Another thing for, I'll just go ahead and clear out these two. For three point, I'm gonna raise this up. So for three point bracing, now the middle brace does not have to be perpendicular to the supporting member. Before you would need to add in one on the center line and then one on either side of the center line. So I'm just gonna do construction line add material again. And I'm just gonna throw in some construction lines here. I'll go ahead and add in, let's say I want this to be Let's throw all these in here down the line just to show that now this does not need to be perpendicular or to the supporting member. So it shows that that is failing right now just because it hasn't gone through processing yet. There we go. So, so there's some examples that now it is not perpendicular. It does not have to be perpendicular to that supporting member. Along the same lines we have for horizontal bracing. Oops. Say I add in a horizontal brace here. For this one as well, it does not have to be perpendicular, which I'll get to. And let's put in an HSS six by four by say three eighths. So this one's just for my two point shared. And as you can see, it is not perpendicular. And it is a little bit skewed there. So now we have improved our bracing for that. Another one, we'll just drop this down three inches. And we have the same thing for our three point, let's say a WT eight by 13. Three point shared horizontal brace. 
Same thing, it doesn't have to be on the center line. It can be off on either side. So we have that one that is not, I guess, perpendicular or going straight on that center line. Some more improved horizontal bracing. As we spoke before, you don't have to have horizontal bracing perpendicular to each other like before. So for example, this one up here, if they're perpendicular for two beams and a column, for the horizontal brace to go in. So I have a, two beams here, and then maybe in a column, and I'll just put in a horizontal brace. Let's do, sure. Um, yep. So we haven't improved the bracing there. Same thing, I'm just going to delete this and add in a beam. Let's just do 16 by 26. So if I have a horizontal brace for a beam to beam as well, it doesn't have to be perpendicular to each other. And, oops, not a vertical brace. So we've improved the geometry on a beam to beam as well. We do have some, a new design method added. We have developed a Indian code added to our design methods and design criteria. So it'd be found in the connection design method up on top. This will be licensed like European code as well. So it would be a specific license. If it does interest you, you can contact your sales rep as well. Another thing that's inside of design criteria would be we have some improved seismic. So we have removed the option to turn off horizontal and vertical brace gross capacity checks in the design criteria. The option used to be over here under bracing. These options were left over from the AISC first edition seismic manual when that was released. The gross capacity check is now properly handled using the over strength factors. Another thing that we have for seismic vertical brace gusset design, we have SCBF and OCBF. Your engineer can either pick between a special contrast uh, concentrically uh, braced frame when it, uh, which will make the gusset shape with a hinge zone or they can pick from ordinary con <laughs> sorry constrictly braced frame where they have make a regular gusset shape originally we designed a regular gusset connection then stretch the gusset to add a hinge zone the hinge zone will allow the gusset to fold so that the brace can buckle. By designing the gusset from scratch using the hinge zone shape, we get smaller gussets in some cases. So for right now, we're just going to use it at SCBF. So right here, I have four vertical braces that are the same. I'm just going to change all of them or all four to seismic. So when I do that, since it's SCBF, it will create a hinge zone. So like I stated, the hinge zone uh, will allow the gusset to fold so that the brace can buckle. So it kind of raises that gusset up. Now if I go into design criteria, Oops. and change it to OCBF and hit OK. 
And maybe I'll just mark this one for processing. So now you can see these two changed and it is a regular gusset. So this one's the regular gusset and then this one has a hinge zone on it. We also can distribute a percent of the uniform force method vertical load, col uh, vertical load column connection. So for an example up here, if I edit this vertical brace and I come down to connection specs, there is the UF UFM special case design right now it's set to automatic it reads from my design criteria so let's say a quick uh, summary of the three so a no special case it will distribute the gusset interface forces to the beam so i'll just hit okay here and if i edit this beam and come down into my loads it will say how many loads. So right now it says that there's 9.07 kips are getting distributed into my beam connection. So maybe I change this to, I'll come back to three, or sorry, I'll come back to two. If I change it to three, this only works if it's framing into the web of a column. And in that case, it will, um, Let's see, it, there'll be no gusset to the column web connection and only frame to the beam. So then all of the loads are distributed into the beam. So if I edit that beam and I come down to the loads, it will say the gusset interface forces and 13.76 kips are then getting distributed into the beam. So now coming back to special case two, Now there's an option here. Now this is only in your member edit screen. It is not job wide, but you could do uh, what special case two does is it minimizes the shear load in the column to beam connection. So if I left this for right now and I just edit this beam, none of the loads are getting distributed into the beam to column connection. Well, if I wanted to, the new option now is my case two transfer percent. Maybe I want 50% of the loads distributed into that. Now, if I edit that beam and come down, it is getting 50% of the loads into that beam to column connection. We can now do a fully welded moment connection. So I'm just gonna put in a beam here. And maybe I'll just make it a stub beam for five feet. Oops, it's got left on. So I'll do five feet and maybe I want it to be a W16 by 26. So if I edit this and my input connection type, now I can drop that down and we have fully welded moment. Now once I have that turned on, um, it will automatically set the moment to welded. So if I come down here to my moment. We have it automatically set to welded and the correct end preps and welds will also be applied. So if I hit okay, now we have a fully welded. Currently these are still independent members. If you'd like the stub beam to be a part of the column, you will still need to copy that material over to the column still. Currently vertical braces don't frame into the intersection at this time, but there is a PR for this. And then the last thing we have is in, inside flange plates. So I'm going to turn these two beams to a spliced moment.
And I'm just going to lower this load quick. Okay. So in my design criteria, there is an option under automatic design load. There is an option to use inner flange plates for beam splice moment. Or you can do it individually. If I edit this. and come down into my moment area, there is an use inner flange plates. So if I set that to yes, it will automatically change that as well on this side for use inner flange plates as well. So if I look at that, now I have inside or inner flange plates. And then if I edit this, and in my connection specs, we do have flange plates on. It can be on this member or other member. So that concludes today's webinar on the new 2017 connection enhancements. We have now covered the new seismic options, improved two and three point bracing, fully welded moment connections, and more.